The story I'm going to share with you today starts about six years ago. I was in medical school and on a clinical rotation at a local county hospital where I had the opportunity to help care for a woman that had unfortunately sustained a severe burn injury. From the beginning, it was unclear if she was going to live. She was intubated, transfused, resuscitated, taken to the operating room for various procedures, but over the course of the next several weeks, she made an incredible recovery and her life was saved by an amazing team of doctors and nurses. However, when I went to follow up on her months later, I learned that an infected pressure ulcer had caused a severe bloodstream infection and she was now, once again, fighting for her life. I couldn't believe that a pressure ulcer, a bed sore, was capable of putting someone's life in danger. I was immediately inspired to learn more about this problem. It turns out that there is a pressure ulcer epidemic in this country and around the world. In fact, in the United States, one out of every 30 hospitalized patients will develop a pressure ulcer. This is a problem that impacts well over a million patients every year. Given the magnitude of the pressure ulcer epidemic, I teamed up with a fellow medical student, Daniel Shen, and together we set out to see if there was anything we could do to help. Our first step was to fundamentally understand what causes pressure ulcers. As the name suggests, pressure is ultimately responsible for the formation of pressure ulcers. When patients lie in bed for long periods of time and remain in one position, the sustained pressure impairs capillary blood flow, which leads to tissues being starved of oxygen and vital nutrients. The result is tissue damage, and this damage can be so severe that skin and underlying fat and muscle can actually die. Pressure ulcers initially start as just an area of redness, but if left untreated, they can evolve into full thickness wounds that extend all the way down to the bone. Normally, when we lie in bed at night, we toss and turn, shift our weight, and do subtle micro-movements to help prevent pressure from building up. However, patients that are sick, elderly, medicated, delirious, they don't necessarily perform these normal movements, and as a result, they're at risk for developing pressure ulcers. Pressure ulcers are not only unsightly, they're also very expensive to treat, and they pose a huge burden to our healthcare system. And because pressure ulcers are considered preventable, these treatment costs are not reimbursable. And this is just the direct cost. Or, excuse me, to put that cost into perspective, each year, we spend more healthcare dollars treating pressure ulcers than we do treating influenza. Pressure ulcers also negatively impact a hospital's quality metrics, which is becoming increasingly important in this era of pay for performance. Pressure ulcers also open up institutions to potential litigation. Again, since pressure ulcers are largely considered preventable, they can sometimes be viewed as a sign of caregiver negligence. And beyond the financial implications, pressure ulcers have a significant impact on a patient's quality of life. So how do we prevent pressure ulcers? Because some patients are not able to turn on their own, they are completely dependent on their nursing care. About 160 years ago, the importance of patient turning was first popularized by Florence Nightingale during the Crimean War. She developed the concept of turning protocols, where wounded soldiers were turned and repositioned every two hours around the clock. Patient turning has since become a fundamental practice that is now ingrained into the fabric of nursing care. Even to this day, there is a consensus amongst nurses and physicians that frequent and regular turning is critically important to pressure ulcer prevention. This has been the standard of care for pressure ulcer prevention for almost two centuries. Many hospitals use a turn clock like this one to help coordinate turning efforts. Patients are put onto a specific side of their body during each two-hour time block throughout the day. However, despite the simplicity of this approach, it's been shown that compliance with turning protocols is poor, and as a result, pressure ulcer rates have remained high. Given the importance of turning, a number of studies have examined compliance rates with our traditional turning protocols. 
In 2001, a very large multi-center study was conducted to determine how closely our standard two-hour turning protocol was being followed on a national level in high-risk patients. The authors concluded that compliance was only 66%. In a separate study involving ICU patients who were prospectively monitored, it was found that many of these high-risk patients were simply not being turned. A staggering one in four patients remained in the exact same position for over eight hours, putting them at a significant risk for developing pressure ulcers. So why are so many patients falling through the cracks? Maintaining compliance with the turning schedule is not easy, and researchers have identified a number of problems with traditional turning protocols. First and foremost, it's difficult or impossible for a nurse to continuously monitor each patient's position and movements. The, tur the turn clock is unfortunately not able to alert providers if they turn into an undesirable position. For example, a nurse may go and turn a patient, but the patient can potentially just roll back onto a recently pressurized area without anyone really knowing. Also, for patients that have existing pressure ulcers, it's highly desirable to keep them off of those areas at all times. But again, the turn clock cannot alert providers if they turn onto a pressure ulcer. Second, the turn record documentation is often incomplete or it inadequately reflects a patient's true position history. When care is being transferred between providers, having an accurate and reliable turn record helps ensure that patients are turned in the best way possible. For example, if the position history indicates that a patient has been lying predominantly on their backside or their right side, with that information, a nurse may decide to turn the patient onto their left side in order to optimize the overall pressure distribution for the patient. Without accurate documentation, that type of position optimization is just not possible. And finally, in the busy hospital setting, the turn clock has proven to be an ineffective alerting and reminder system. In this age of shrinking nurse-to-patient ratios where resources are stretched and nurses are task saturated, it's unfortunately not surprising that turns can get missed. So given the limitations of the current prevention methods, Danny and I decided to develop a technology solution that would help ensure that no patient slips through the cracks. In order to improve nursing efficiency and patient care, we developed the LEAF patient monitoring system. This wireless, single-use, disposable sensor is able to continuously track and monitor the movements and orientations of hospitalized patients. The device is FDA cleared and designed to provide nursing staff with a better way to monitor, coordinate, optimize, and customize turning schedules for large groups of patients. At the core of the system is our patient sensor, which is a small, lightweight, wireless device that continuously monitors every patient's movement and orientation. Data from each sensor is communicated to a proprietary mesh network of relay antennas. These antennas are distributed throughout a monitoring environment, and they ultimately transfer data to a central server. From the server, data is aggregated and then can be displayed on any web-enabled device, such as tablets, computers, or even cell phones. From the monitoring station, nurses and other staff can easily identify patients that are in need of assisted turns. Any patient in need of assistance can easily be recognized by a simple green, yellow, and red color scheme. The system also automatically recognizes and documents any adequate patient self-turns so that nurses don't need to turn patients that are turning on their own. All of the desired turning parameters, such as turning period, turning angle, and decompression time, can be individually customized for each patient to allow for personalized care plans. In order to assess how this system impacts compliance with patient turning protocols, an empirical study with an interrupted time series design was performed. The study was conducted in a 39-bed acute care medical unit, and 138 patients were divided into control and intervention groups, and our sensor was used to objectively monitor the turning compliance in each patient. In the control group, our sensor was applied to patients, but the sensor data was not provided to nursing staff. Nurses continue to coordinate turning schedules in the typical fashion using their standard reminders and documentation. 75 patients were analyzed in the control group, and over 4,000 hours of continuous position data was collected. Once the baseline compliance had been established, we then turned on our, monitoring station, our, our user interface at monitoring stations, at which point the, 
leaf system began coordinating and optimizing turning efforts. We analyzed 63 patients in the intervention group, and over 3,500 hours of continuous position data was recorded. Our primary endpoint was compliance with the hospital standard two-hour turning protocol. In the control group, the average compliance was 64%. Following implementation of the LEAF system, the compliance increased to 98%. The effect was even more dramatic in patients in isolation rooms who are typically less visible to nursing staff. In these patients, the average baseline compliance was 48%. After implementing the LEAF system, the compliance increased to 99%. We also analyzed compliance by time of day and by nursing shift. In this graph, on the x-axis is the time of day, and the y-axis is the compliance rate. As you can see in the control group, there was a significant amount of variability in compliance depending on the time of day. After implementing the LEAF system, the degree of cyclical variation decreased, and the compliance was higher at all hours of the day. The system allowed staff to deliver a standard, high-quality pressure ulcer prevention program to each patient. Historically, there have been many attempts made to improve compliance with patient turning protocols, but nothing has really proved to be effective and sustainable. Bev Jackish, a wound care nurse with decades of experience, feels that this is the first system to really work. Traditionally, turning protocols have taken a cookie-cutter, one-size-fits-all approach. However, patient turning is a therapeutic intervention, and as such, it should ideally be customized to the individual patient. Just as you wouldn't give every patient the same medication at the same dose at the same time of day, turning should also be customized based on patient-specific factors. With improved software analytics and artificial intelligence, we now have the ability to create a more data-centric approach to patient care. With integration into electronic medical record, we now have the ability to automatically assign patients to the optimal turning schedules based on hospital protocols and current research. And the system has the ability to deliver highly personalized care that is sensitive to patient-specific factors and even environmental factors, such as the type of bed the patient's on, the time of day, or even caregiver staffing ratios. Position monitoring technology represents an evolution in an age-old nursing practice and allows nurses to deliver higher quality of care in an easier and more efficient manner. There are a number of other applications for this technology, and our goal is to broadly help prevent the complications associated with immobility and improve the healthcare experience for patients and their providers. In the future, we're exploring using our system as an ambulation monitor to help doctors and nurses monitor a patient's compliance with prescribed ambulation protocols. It's been shown that frequent and early ambulation during a hospitalization helps prevent complications and reduces the length of stay. Our system can also function as a fall detector and alert staff if a patient has fallen. Like pressure ulcers, falls are considered never events, and as such, they negatively impact a hospital's performance metrics. Not only can we alert staff that a patient has fallen, our system has the ability to track a patient's location so that we can quickly find them and treat them. For patients that are supposed to remain in bed because they are a fall risk, our system has the ability to alert staff if a patient attempts to leave their bed or their room. And finally, our system has the ability to continuously monitor a patient's heart rate and respiratory rate, which can detect the first signs of patient deterioration. Over the years, the market for wearable technology has begun to explode. Wearables have enabled consumers to track virtually every aspect of their daily lives, from their activity level, their stress level, vital signs, even their mood. Consumers are clearly very interested in the concept of the quantified self. I believe there is a place for wearables in the patient care environment, and that this technology can be used to help improve diagnostic capabilities and therapeutic outcomes. As I think back to that patient experience I had as a medical student, I only wish that position and orientation monitoring systems had been more readily available then. I'm hopeful that one day this type of technology will be able to, all patients will be able to benefit from this type of technology and that we'll, we'll no longer see the horrible complications associated with patient immobility. Thanks.